Hello, everyone. Welcome to the workshop. Uh, I'm going to start sharing my screen. Uh, as we get settled, I invite you to check out the session chat. That's where we'll be sharing a couple links and prompts, just kind of augmenting the things that I'm verbally saying out loud. I, and also, um, Anika uh, is here from Women in Product to help with uh, managing the chat. Uh, this is going to be an interactive session, so if you have any questions at any time, yeah, feel free to, to post a question in the chat and Anika will uh, flag those down for me. Um, and yes, a note on accessibility, we have, I believe we have uh, captions in screen enabled, but if you also uh, prefer a browser option, uh, there's web, you can use webcaptioner.com slash captioner. And that actually allows you to save a transcript on your own as well. Okay. And uh, yes, oh, Krista, you're from Detroit. I grew up in Michigan. <laughs> So also appreciate burgers, although these days I eat more Beyond Beef, <laughs> Beyond Meat uh, than real meat. But yes, welcome everyone. Um, and we invite you to introduce yourself in the chat. Love to know your name and pronouns, if any, where you're dialing in from. And uh, I'm hoping that we all, uh, you know, any home cooked meals, favorite home cooked meals that you're missing or craving right now. And as we get settled here, I also invite you to take a moment to stretch, wiggle around. If you've been sitting, there's been so many amazing talks today and there's so many amazing workshops. I thank you for choosing to come here today. Um, I'm gonna give everyone like another minute uh, we don't necessarily have a lot of time, so I think I'm going to wait another minute and then we're going to just dive into things. Uh, so I just want to remind uh, you can all the new folks that are joining. Uh, I want to direct your attention to the session chat and there's where we're going to share links and references um, and uh, ways to connect with myself. I also have two special guests that I'm really excited to introduce shortly. Uh, noodle soup, oh my goodness. I'm looking at all these meals. I am, it's a good thing I had a little bit of lunch. Paella, hi Katie, hi Gabby, hi Irene. Uh, homemade eggplant parm from Shelly. Oh geez, yes. <laughs> well, um, we are, I think we're gonna get started. So uh, yes, yeah, so I invite you to take a moment to stretch, wiggle things out. Uh, let me get my screen situated. And yes, welcome. Uh, uh, just another reminder about accessibility. I believe there's a closed captioning icon in your screen. However, if you choose, there's you can also go to webcaptioner.com in a new browser window that captures any audio into a transcript that you can then save on your desktop. And for anyone just listening in, um, I'm Susan, I'm, I'm standing at my screen. I've got a wood closet with some plants and windows behind me wearing with short black hair and a blonde streaks and um, a short sleeve shirt. Uh, and yes, if you're wondering, oh wait, so who is Susan? That's me, I'm your host. I am a product coach and facilitator, also founder of Starts for All, a purpose-driven online incubator for self-funded founders from underrepresented populations. I also love ramen and dogs. At one point I had three dogs, now I'm down to two, um, but I'm always happy to talk about dogs or ramen. All right, another Portland folk, uh, Dawn, welcome. So great to meet you and homemade sushi, wow. Okay, I have to stop looking at the chat. Um, I also wanna share with you a land acknowledgement statement uh, I host this event from Portland, Oregon, which rests on traditional village sites of the Multnomah, Kathlamet, Clackamas, and many other tribes who made their homes along the Columbia River. 
I recognize the indigenous peoples as the original stewards of the land, water, plants, and animals who called these places home. And I recognize that I'm here because of their forced removal from these territories. And in remembering these communities, we honor their legacy, their lives, and their descendants. Also on behalf of Starts for All, I invite all of you to contribute to our shared land acknowledgement, which you can find online at startsforall.org slash land hyphen acknowledgement. And um, Anika has also graciously shared the information in the chat. All right, now um, another note around to help guide our interactions uh, with each other today, it is a workshop. So it's going to be hands-on. We're going to hold space for some reflection and sharing. And I want to um, uh, encourage you to uh, help foster a welcoming, inclusive, and positive space for all. It is a space for us to celebrate, to learn, and grow. And I also uh, want to bring forth just a few principles to keep in mind. One is allow for grace. Everyone stumbles over their words sometimes, and we want everyone to be able to speak without fear or judgment. Um, I stumble over my own words. Also allow for as uncertainty and messiness. It's okay to not to know. It's okay to be confident and doubtful. And also to keep in mind that this is a gathering that is a unique experience that has never occurred or taken place before. We're all meeting each other for the first time. Uh, last but not least, take away stories and not names. So if someone shares an experience that gives you perspective, take it with you, lift it up, and be sure to respect the privacy and feelings of the person who shared. We're, going, we're going to talk about purpose, the things that you care about the most. Um, so I invite you to kind of keep these, hold these values and principles uh, close. And I also, if you have other thoughts around community agreements that come to mind, I invite you to share them in the chat. All right. Now, I am really um, excited and honored to have two special guests with me today. And um, Anika, if you can bring them on up on stage, that would be awesome. Uh, uh, these two special guests are both seasoned product leaders, founders, and entrepreneurs in their own right who care about making a difference in the world. I'm super excited. This kind of happened last minute, so I'm glad to have them join us and to give you some added perspective on crafting um, your North Star vision. I have JJ Rory, uh, and I'm going to have them kind of introduce themselves, JJ Rory and Shelly Icona. JJ, would you be able to say a few words about what you do and what you care about? You bet. Thanks, Susan. So hi, everyone. My name is JJ, and Susan said um, she, her, uh, pronouns. Um, I am a uh, founder and CEO of a company called Great Product Management. Uh, we do advising, coaching, training. Um, I've also had a startup before, a healthcare uh, technology startup um, in my past. Uh, so I have a little bit of uh, experience there. Um, I teach at Johns Hopkins University in the engineering school, teach product management. Um, I'm an author and a podcast host. So I'm so excited to be here. Thanks. Thanks, JJ and Shelly. Hi, everyone. It's great to see all of you, see some familiar faces and names. I'm so honored to be here today. Thank you, Susan and JJ. This is fun. Um, so my name is Shelly Icona, she, her. Um, I started out as a woman in tech uh, many years ago and worked in Silicon Valley. Um, I'm a member of the LGBTQ community and feel like I learned a little bit of how to sort of navigate um, that world. I started my innovation firm on its axis in 2009 when I was at Yahoo and have grown it quite a bit. So I have a lot of experience moving from uh, product ship to foundership. Um, we help organizations grow and scale uh, through product and people solutions. And recently I became a general partner at a venture firm and we help underestimated founders um, receive early stage underestimated founders receive um, funding and support. So thank you. Awesome, thanks Shelly. Uh, I wanna like emoji everybody's comments. Uh, so thank you for being here today. And that brings us to, that's a great segue into our focus. 
So we are all here to craft your, my North Star vision and to turn intention into action, to take those first small steps towards big change. And some of you, if you've seen um, my little preview, you know, I recognize, you know, if you have had a thought that maybe one day you want to be a founder, or maybe you've already felt that pull to make a difference in the world and to take an idea and turn that into reality. Well, this is your chance to take an opportunity to take one step towards realizing that dream. And I share with you, uh, it's a little bit small, but an image from the artist Liz uh, Foslian. You may have seen some of her work on LinkedIn, but it, uh, I think, adequately captures the power of, of small steps. So thank you for being here. This exercise that I'm going to walk you through over the next 40 minutes or so is called the best of times, the worst of times. It's a visioning exercise that I've used in several different contexts with um, startup execs to set product vision, with cross-functional managers to help improve the, way, the ways that they work together, with new product teams, we're forming a product charter, also with solopreneurs and early stage founders to help um, them clarify really what really matters and help them navigate difficult decisions. And the tools that we'll use, all you really need is something to write with. I call it jot and note. Uh, the session chat, which sounds like, seems like everyone's pretty kind of comfortable with the session chat. And then um, I'm hoping that we have time to do breakouts or even bringing people on stage to share what they come up with. And I also want to know um, that it's OK to pass. When we do breakouts, if we do them, I believe this platform will put you in a room. And if you decide that you want to just observe and sit back, com that's completely OK. You can stay off mute. You can, or you can stay off video, stay on mute, totally OK. All right. And if you have any questions during this process or as I walk through the slides, feel free to type them in the chat. Um, Anika will, uh, or Anika will uh, help flag those down and Shell and JJ also kind of will I'll lean on you to kind of speak up if, if you see any uh, questions from the crowd. Uh, so here's a little bit of background before we jump into things. Just, this is um, the framework or the special sauce as I like to call it. Uh, it's, um, it's what really what makes this approach unique. It's a mashup of the Amazon working backwards method, which some of you may have heard of, which is about starting with your desired future state, a public announcement, a press release of what a product launch might look like. And then we add on, so we take the uh, press release format and we mash it up with a, the design thinking methodology of worst idea reverse brainstorming, <laughs> naming our worst fears and just laying it all out. And with those two frameworks combined, uh, you come up with the best possible idea. And uh, this, you know, that's really what the framework is. Actually, I'm going to go back a slide and just see if anyone has any questions on that. Um, so in practice, how this works are it's really three simple steps. Step one, this also um, takes cues from service design blueprinting. If anyone is familiar with that process of comparing current state and future state. The first step is a brainstorm exercise around current pain points, looking at status quo and what are the things that you want to change. Step two then looks into the future state. We say, you know, let's say you do build your own venture and business and it grows across, you know, for the next 10 years. What's the worst scenario possible that could come about? And then we dive, step three is diving into the future state. What's the best scenario possible? So really, it's just those three steps. And uh, typically, you know, Oh, you know, if you're in a group of people or, or you want to take more time doing this, each of these steps could be its own workshop for today. But the great thing about this framework is it's super flexible. Again, we're just seeding um, your vision for the future and articulating 
what you really care about in writing. Um, and when you get to that third step, really that's our desired outcome for today, that you walk away with a draft of your North Star of Vision. Any questions about that? So you might be wondering, okay, so what does that really look like? Is Am I gonna walk away with like a sentence and that's it or, or what? Well, uh, that's why I'm super excited to have Shelly and JJ here because we're gonna, um, both of them have graciously volunteered to use their ventures as real life examples. And we're gonna start with JJ. Um, I'd love to have you just briefly describe your issue space, your company, who you help. And then I'd love to hear from you um, your uh, worst case and best case scenario. Yeah, you bet. So I love this exercise, by the way, this is a fun activity and, and, and it makes a big impact. So, so great product management is a um, product management advisory firm. We do training, we do consulting, um, we do coaching. Um, and, and I've been in kind of product management training and advising for a while um, in my, my own uh, firm, but also in, in other firms as well. Uh, and one thing that I found was that while product management education is important um, and there's some really great training companies out there, what I kept seeing in the product managers that I worked with and the product teams that I worked with is that everyone focused on a framework or a process or a methodology, which is an important part of it, but there are these underlying skills that we in product management must, um, you know, get really good at, or all those processes and frameworks are really for naught. And so great product management is all about kind of fostering those, we call them the immutable or timeless skills that every product manager needs. So that's the idea behind um, great product management is to kind of carve a niche out of the product advisory space and help um, every product manager in the world, regardless of what um, product they work on or industry or, you know, technology, et cetera, um, help them with some kind of common, common skill sets. And, awesome. and I think if you want to share my, yes. <laughs> so share what my went thing. through your mind <laughs> as you're crafting your worst case scenario? Yeah. Time. So again, just to play off that, what I just said is, is, you know, if I fast forward and say, you know, so, so great product management's only been around now for about six months. Like I've, I've been doing this for a long, long time, but my firm is, is brand new. Um, and so, you know, the way that, that we fail is that if we can't convey the idea that um, it's all about process, right? It's all about, you know, that, that, that framework or that new best kind of, you know, methodology that at the end of the day, if we can't convince people that there are some underlying bedrock skills that you've also got to work on, um, in addition to try and optimize your, your workflows, um, then that's what it's going to look like. It's going to, you know, somebody at some company is going to say, yeah, thanks for trying, but nah, we don't believe you. We're just going to keep focusing on all these processes and frameworks. I love this quote here where it says, uh, where this, this phrase, JJ and great product man management tried to teach us that they yeah. were. Yeah. Um, I got, if I'm, if I'm just kind of playing this out in my mm -hmm. mind, like I, I can see myself in a workshop and I can see these folks saying, you know what? We don't buy that. Just go ahead. You can take the lunch that we bought you, but just get out. <laughs> That's worst case. So now, um, what would be, this is the best of times, the best case scenario that could come about from your business? Yeah. So, so, uh, you know, uh, enough, of course, I can't, I can't meet with every product manager in the world, but, you know, enough of the companies that I work with really, really grasping it and believing in it and knowing that they can simplify this complex role that we live in and work in by focusing on, on a handful of things like relationship building, communication, you know, judgment and, and avoiding biases. These, these kind of, you know, again, just, just these timeless skills that aren't that complex. They take intention, but they don't, you know, it's not the most complex thing in the world. And so if I can convince just enough of them to say, yep, we can simplify this by focusing on this, then everything else becomes easier that's winning. Right. And so my, my favorite, um, 
you know, make believe friend is Jane here who um, really bought into my, <laughs> into my theory. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks, JJ. Now, and um, this, I will I'll also show the, share the slide to the stack so everyone will have this as a resource. Um, Shelley, how about you? I'd like to bring you up or have you talk a little bit about Onyx Access. I think we have a few more minutes and then we'll, we'll get started and dive into the exercise. Yeah, sure, Susan. Um, so Onyx Access was started in 2009. Um, but I really used a step approach to grow it to where it is today. So we are we've won some awards we are in the innovation consulting space and so what does that mean we basically a boutique management consulting firm um, and we work with the global 2000 so we went from working with startups to now working with really large organizations and helping them innovate through um, creating the right products for the market and helping them with their um, internal innovation talent and diversity uh, to deliver great products to the market. So high level, that's what we do. And this is a very vulnerable exercise, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I just thought, oh my gosh, the worst thing that could be, right? We, there's this, um, there's an actual magazine called consulting.us to talk about all the uh, firms out there that we actually grew. And um, at the end of the day, we lacked our own product market fit. <laughs> Um, setting a lack of relevance in the market on its axis shutters its doors. And I thought, oh, the worst case could be, you know, we're working with a, um, an impact officer at, at an organization and we're helping them. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really innovation theater and um, we're just making zero progress. That's awesome. I feel like I relate to this. <laughs> Um, as a founder that we lack product market fit and then best, best of times. 10 yeah, years best, now. best of times is we just make all of the things that we believe are really important. I think this group really, Susan and JJ, and we share this, we talk about this a lot together. You know, we believe in diversity, sustainability, and social impact in the work that we do. We're with helping product managers learn, helping startups. Um, so, we make it easy on its access makes it easy to help organizations around the globe create this just we're, we're just really known we're, we're an innovation leader um, in the impact area and um, it would be maybe a chief innovation officer that would say um, you know we've we've onboarded and retained this incredibly diverse team diverse in um, culture race thought every, every aspect um, we've tripled our innovation roadmap and our ideas, and we've actually achieved uh, United Nations sustainable development goals across the portfolio. Like, how amazing would that be if we could do that? So aspirational and audacious. That's really what visions come down to. So, all right. Well, thank you, Shelly and JJ, for sharing your best of times and worst of times scenarios. Okay, everyone. So now, are you ready to get started? Um, so if you've been waiting <laughs> eagerly with your notebook and your pencil or your digital pad, uh, stretch out your fingers. For now, I'm gonna take you through those three steps I mentioned around current state, future state, future state. And um, I'm gonna share a couple of prompts with you. And these are gonna be timed prompts um, to get the juices going. And uh, all right, so step one, I want you to consider the current state's status quo. Who, what is the local context or issue space that feels most pressing for you? So this is a, a generative brainstorm exercise to just generate the seeds for your future state state um, kind of exercise steps. So jot down whatever comes to mind there is no wrong or bad words to use. Just think about when I say local context, like your communities, it can be a geographic region, it can be organizational, a system. What is that ecosystem or issue space? And then in that context, who are the people, the communities or audiences that are running into barriers or lacking easy access 
to essential resources or services. And what are your greatest fears if nothing changes? And I'm going to give everyone a couple minutes to jot down, to do some solo brainstorm. I'm going to find some uh, Tracy Chapman and we'll put on some music here for you. Let's see. Let's see, we'll get some. So again, the local context, you want to jot down notes about who who are the people or the communities? Or, and if you have, maybe you already have an idea that you've been thinking about. So you already have an idea of your, your target customer, your core audience, but maybe there's multiple audiences. And again, your greatest fears, if nothing changes, what might happen? Um, I'm just looking and watching the chat. Does everyone have a couple notes on that? Okay. A couple more seconds. So now fast forward 10 years, it's 2032, 2032. We all have more gray hairs and imagine that you've founded and grown a business or venture intended to make things better for the people, the community, communities, the audiences that you noted before. Okay. So just imagine you have this business, it's been growing for the last 10 years and the intention is to make things better. Give it a name. Now we're going to name things. There's power into naming. You can call it project Panda. Actually, that was my uh, project name before starts for all of, um, became a thing. Call it project X, do good LLC, maybe Susan cares, uh, Celeste cares, LLC, uh, any name will do. So just pick a name. And if you're not sure, I say go with project X. Now, guess what? It's 10 years again in the future, 2032, and your business has been granted a cover story, a cover page takeover of any publication you choose, any publication with global visibility. So think about, um, just like with Shelly and consulting.us, like what is that publication that is relevant to your issue space? with global visibility and write down the name of that publication. Maybe it's the New York Times Magazine. Maybe it's TechCrunch. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's Forbes. Maybe it's, uh, it can be anything. Maybe it's Science Today. Now you're going to craft the cover page. Okay, so this is step two. Imagine we're going to dive into the worst of times, okay? And uh, imagine after 10 years, the worst scenario possible that could come about from your business. What is that headline that clearly names the worst possible change or impact that occurred? And what is the subhead that describes how your customer or community doesn't benefit? Write that subhead as if it's the only part of the article that anyone reads. And then a stretch goal, if you uh, feel the juice is flowing, you could also write 
a quote from a hypothetical or dissatisfied customer or beneficiary, um, and a concluding remark from someone within your team, maybe another executive or someone from your advisory team that captures their key takeaway from this worst case scenario. And I'm gonna give you another couple minutes to really think this out. After this, I'm gonna invite some reflection. So um, for those of you, you know, hopefully this doesn't kind of uh, keep you from just jotting whatever comes to your head. Um, but if anyone wants to share, uh, we'll invite you after this step. Okay, so we're gonna give you about three minutes to do this. And starting the, cl the clock. As Tracy tells us to run, maybe we're imagining that she's telling us to run from the worst, worst case scenario possible. This headline can be short, it can be long, but clearly name the worst possible change that occurred. So the headline and then the subhead that clearly states how your customer or the people in the community don't benefit. If you have a little extra time, you can think about an actual quote from a dissatisfied customer. Or a concluding remark from someone within your team. So just take a couple extra minutes uh, or seconds. Um, I'd love to know how was that experience for you? Does anyone, any volunteers from the audience, uh, you don't even need to come up on stage if you don't want to. I believe maybe you might be able to just like unmute yourself, but any anyone in, in the audience that would like to share the worst scenario possible. Are folks still writing? Actually, I'm wondering, um, before we dive into the last step, um, uh, Anika, if we could maybe do a quick poll and see if folks would like to do breakouts or not. Would that be possible? Let me see if I can. Yes, absolutely. I'm already in. Okay, cool. And this is just a poll to see if, I'm gonna dive into the third step, but after we do the best case, um, what is actually can be really fun is sharing what you came up with with someone else and just getting some outside perspective. So if you're feeling like maybe you might want to um, do that, um, go ahead and take this poll. And actually I see Marie, uh, would you like to come on stage and share a little bit about your experience with the work 
I'm going to go ahead and add you with the worst case scenario. Okay, awesome. Hi, Marie. Hi. Thanks for letting me share. Yeah. Um, this was kind of a fun exercise because I've never done this, but should I just go through like, yeah, I don't, you can even screen share if you, I don't know if you, or if it's just written down, but just, yeah. What's your headline? My headline is <clears throat> habitable planet harm the planet contrary, contrary to its mission. Um, so have, the Habitable Planet is my project name where I want to, I would like to help um, local or impacted populations um, in the local or global communities from the global climate change. That's always been my passion. And um, so I, I, I said, this is a Habitable Planet project. I want it to be on a Time magazine. And my worst case scenario is that someone saying habitable planet actually harms the planet <laughs> contrary to permission because it's confusing, unclear, and misleading in its claim to help the planet to become more habitable for um, disadvantaged population. It actually hurts them uh, opposite to its claim. Yeah. By spreading misinformation without qualification, do not ever listen to what they say. It's dangerous <laughs> by the indigenous people, community chief, or a UN director. So that's my that's my awesome. Opinion. Well, not awesome for that scenario, but that I, that sounds pretty bad. Um, and thank you for being um raising hand raising and just coming on stage and sharing kind of your your deepest fears um and nikel i think i'm pronouncing it right uh also appreciate your comment here yeah um okay great so i'm gonna um we'll invite nikel up on and then we are going to dive into thank you marie um and and then we'll dive into the last step and do breakouts okay so it looks, uh, thank you, Anika, for, for doing the poll. Hi, Nikhil, welcome. Am I pronouncing your name? Yes. Okay. Yes, you Great. are. So yeah, just you. give us a little context about your, um, yeah, your adventure name and your, your worst headline. Yeah, so thank you so much. And it's actually similar to Marie. So thank you, Marie, for, for jumping in. Um, doing this in about couple minutes, uh, but it was fun to stretch. I was, I was leaning towards ocean advocates or ocean voice. Um, so ocean conservation is the theme. Um, so one of the kind of like worst case scenarios that I could think of was the headline was, you know, ocean deem inhospitable to animals and humans, right? Can't get any worse than that. Um, and more specifically, the subheader would be that ocean advocates fails to do just that. And with lack of that voice, 95% uh, of the critical ecosystems are no longer, you know, available, right? Um, yes, it, it does. It does match. Um, what I really liked about this exercise and I sh shared in the chat is that, you know, a lot of these things that we're passionate about are things that we feel like aren't currently being addressed anyways. And so as I was thinking about the worst case scenario, that's no different than any of us not stepping up and not trying to do it. I feel like the biggest thing to overcome in this exercise is more your own personal fears of personal failure, right? Um, and in which case, as product managers, you kind of get used to it. You know what I mean? Like we are born and bred to fail in many ways, both as humans and in um, product management. And especially if it's an opportunity that you're really passionate about, I feel like more good can come of it than not. So I appreciate going through this exercise just to be able to give myself some of that um, insight. Awesome. Well, thank you, Nikel, for coming on and like just just naming these these issue spaces. I think even that is a first step. So thank you for giving voice um, to these communities. And uh, we're gonna say we're gonna kind of um, hand you kind of usher you back. 
And I'm going to switch back to the presentation. Um, Anika, I just want to check at the t at, when time comes, is the session automatically going to close? Or if um, you like linger? <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. But let's assume it automatically. Okay. Closes. So yeah. we have just a few minutes left. So I'm going to do um, so the last step here. Imagine after 10 years, the best scenario possible. Okay. So that switch gears, look out the window, look if you can, if you can see it, look at the sky, the plants, think of all the good things that feel good to you, whether, you know, what it's like to feel that joy and delight. And imagine after 10 years, what is the best scenario possible that comes about from your business? And what is that headline that clearly names that best possible change? And let's just focus on the headline. If you can get to the subhead or any of the other parts, it's great. Um, we'll just do a qu quick um, kind of minute, two minute thought on that headline. And then we will put you in breakouts for a, a quick share out, even if you can just say hello. <laughs> um, I think that would be awesome. So we'll make sure that we get time for that and then we'll bring you back in the room. So just a minute here to think about, to write down best scenario possible that comes about from your business 10 years from now. What is that headline? And then just take a couple minutes to wrap up. We're going to put everyone in trios so that if you decide that you want to pass, you can just stay off video or you cannot join the room. Um, Anika, you ready for the breakouts? Yes. I'm okay. Setting it up right now. Or you may have the option to not join. So we'll. And how many minutes do you want to? Um, just we'll do two minutes. <laughs> so I'll be a quick. Everyone gets a minute or so to just share your headline. Or, you know, if you want to just connect and say hello, that's perfectly fine, too. And then we'll bring you all back into the main room. All right. You're all going to be in breakouts starting now.
How was that? I didn't get put in one because I'm a moderator. Yeah. No, no, it was good. It yeah. was quick though. It was super fast. It was yeah. super fast. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I just not sure if we're going to get kicked out of the room and, and that's always what happens. Um, cause we have like a minute left on the clock. Uh, but hopefully, you know what, if you took note of the person in the room with you, there's one-on-one -on -one networking in Hopin, and I encourage you to connect with the person in the room. Um, oh, sorry, Sue. Yeah, I, I encourage you to connect with someone in the room. I'm actually going to linger here just in case like the space remains open and then y'all, we can all kind of like talk, but Here's a key takeaway for you. I'd like to just share. Um, if you want to make progress towards your vision to think about this key question, yes. I hope we can have access to chat. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? You have, I'm going to give everyone access to this presentation, which is startsforall.org slash first step. Um, and you can download this. Oops. That's um, the direct link to the presentation, but the vanity URL is startsforall.org slash first step. Um, and I wanna leave you with this quote from Audre Lorde about revolution is not a one-time event. It is becoming always vigilant for the smallest opportunity to make genuine change. And I apologize for the short time for the um, breakouts. This is part of the uncertainty and messiness of doing things that have never been done before and also the journey of a founder. But I wanna thank you all for being here. Um, cheers to the future of foundership. There is also a facilitator's guide, a Google doc template. If you wanna use this for yourself and. Again, there's, I have the presentation, but the Google Doc actually um, has a little more detail in writing if, you, if that's a format that works for you. You can also use it for your product teams. Um, feel free to connect with us, with JJ, Shelley, and myself on LinkedIn. And if you have, oops, oops, I, um, oh, I was in the wrong window, I think. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, <laughs> I invite you to connect with us and I'm just gonna hang out here for the next 15 minutes. And if things don't close, then if you have any questions, um, we, we can talk about things. All right, so thank you. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Anika, also for all your help. Thank you, Irene, Heather, Lakshmi, Katie, Varsha, Atira, Valeen. Um, and whoops, and here is the link to the presentation. Okay. Okay. It looks like maybe we can linger for a little bit. So if anyone would like to talk directly, you can request or ask. I think there's an option to ask to come up on stage. And I'm going to just um, stop screen sharing. Or if you have a question in the chat and you want to share. Your exercise. Happy to chat more. Although I'm sure you all have places to be and things to do. All right, thank you, Sue. Hi, Celeste. Glad you can make it. Hi, Valine. Thanks, JJ. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yeah, Valine, okay. yes. <laughs> so I really enjoyed this session. Um, I think starting from the name, product mm -hmm. to foundership, that's that's awesome. It's powerful. I think that was what drew me to like this session. I wanted to know more, hear from people that have been through that process of 
you know, being a, fan, a founder. And then walking through the workshop and the exercise, it was really, really <laughs> exciting at the same yeah. time. So um, I think my challenge is I have ideas, um, maybe a business that I want to start. And I feel like I don't have that much resource or people around me that have gone through the part that could actually maybe mm -hmm. mentor me or that I could ask questions. Yeah. Um, I do have a lot of questions. So how was it for you finding that support that you needed mm -hmm. when you wanted to, you know, start up your um, your business or your idea? And how can somebody like me find such resources that could help me um, get into that space yes. or that sport? Um, just a little back backstory. I'm Nigerian. I came to the U.S. for my master's and I already graduated. So that's the story. So I have some ideas that I yeah. think would be beneficial to the international student community that I have um, an interest in. Yeah, and I think I can also answer, Irene was also asked, looking for a little bit of guidance on like what to do next and how to take that leap. And um, it's a good thing we're product folks because that gives you the leg up. I, I imagine the reason I say name it something because even if it's just an idea, consider it like a project just like you might at home think like, oh, I have an idea, I, there's a new dish I wanna try out. Or I wanna experiment with um, you know, planting <laughs> shishito peppers this summer. This is kind of what I'm thinking about. And when you have a new idea, how do you, you know, what's your own process for turning those things into reality? Like if you think about what are the general phases of this, I call it a journey, really being a founder and a startup, it's less about the destination it's about the journey and it's thinking about um, what kind of the perspective with starts for all that I bring from a product lens is like, it's actually a lot around prioritizing, breaking things down into these small steps and making progress and thinking about how you're tracking your progress. And so even now where you're just seeding, here's my North Star vision. With startups for all, we always start with your North Star vision and core values. And that's what to us that's what uh, leading with purpose means because the journey of a founder as you're experimenting or like hey i want to make this new noodle dish or something you might have an idea of what that outcome is it tastes amazing you know uh people like it but you know the ingredients the sequencing how much of this how much of that that comes through experimentation and practice and in order to do that um, it's looking at your life, honestly, it is looking at your life, your schedule, and how do I find pockets of time where I'm going to take time to practice or connect, like find community. And as founders, there's actually, uh, it's a whole other ecosystem. I say lead with abundance. It's not about scarcity, but it's a little bit like networking. Like when you've gone into product, how did you start learning about product? Um, did you reach out to other product managers? Did you start, you know, and so as founders, there's um, there's iFund Women. I'm part of FounderKind. Um, so even though Starts for All has its own community, you can go to Starts for All. We have our own community. I'm also part of probably like five other Slack groups. Um, and there aren't, they all have different aspects. Like there's one called Blown, uh, Born Global, which is around immigrant founders. Um, Founder kind is for female and non-binary identified people. There's Out in Tech, which is for LGBTQ+. So there's all these like subsystems. And I would say that there's not necessarily one community that fits them all. Um, it's about kind of finding what is most relevant and feels personal to you. So if, you know, Valine, for you, you know, being Nigerian or even like, what is your venture? I even want to know, like, what is your kind of issue space that you're working in? So um, international students here in the U.S., we struggle with being alone, far away from our families back home or finding the right kind of jobs that comes with sponsorship because of our, um, our immigration or visa status. And that's something and also just finding the right information because i get asked questions a lot by aspiring international students on a day-to-day -day basis so my idea is around building a community for them and helping them find the right 
right kind of um, jobs that comes with sponsorship and also help them to view that community that they might not have um, here, you know, so still yeah. my head. So there's like two sides of the same coin where as you in yeah. the ideas, the next step could be, it's, to me, it's about connections and community starting to explore. How can I learn more about what's going on in this issue space? And so um, in your case, there's like international students. And so finding where are those communities or which ones are closest to you right now that you have access to. And then from a kind of founder perspective, I was just kind of looking up the Slack group. Um, you may be interested in uh, what is it, born, uh, the born global community. Um, and I'm going to try to find a link to share, uh, but the founder kind of the leader, uh, Sunny is awesome. And she hosts free talks um, every month. There's really great programming that uh, spans a, kind of a global audience. Um, Irene, I hopefully I answered part of your question. I, uh, in terms of next steps is, you know, I always have that product hat is just time blocking and prioritizing space. Yeah. And then, yes, feel free to reach out to JJ. I'm sure Shelly as well. I know we are. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions or people you can just request to come up if you want. Um, and Here's the link. We're in global. How did I find my team? Lakshmi. Um, that's always a great question. So I am currently still the only owner. I do, I have had a few people kind of volunteers, although I will, I'll kind of caveat volunteers because I have my own kind of perspective around equity, around using kind of unpaid labor. Um, but I've had a, a few people coming in and out. I have a Slack community that has probably about like 30 different, what I, who I call advocates that part of my focus. Um, and it's over time, what's really important for me is about um, finding people that are aligned with the values and mission of the organization. And so um, when I first started, I my first step was just letting people I knew in my network about what I was doing. And then there's the power of invitation. Um, so thinking about, I think actually the hardest question is more about who, <laughs> you know, who do you want on your team? And maybe JJ and Shelly, and there's also other people can kind of speak to that, but um, it kind of depends on like, if you're looking for co-founders, co like co-founding dating is a whole other thing. Um, it's actually pretty resource intensive uh, and there can be different strategies. Just try to figure out, hey, is this something I need to do first to find co-founders or should I first work on my idea and start to really hone in on my value proposition? Um, but in terms of finding teams, I would say it's similar to if you ever or maybe will be in a position where you need to hire for your team. Uh, it is a, a process. And I think it, the question is, um, you know, who do you want to have on your team? Because it, it does take time. You can kind of first I reach out to my first uh, circle of folks. I say always start with a job description or even a job brief, a role brief sometimes is what I call it to kind of break it down of key responsibilities and expectations. And then to share that with your, with your community. I hope that helped. Anything else? Maybe we have another minute or so. And then I think we'll call it a day, call the scene. Great. And I invite you all also to, um, if you're curious about the Starts for All community, uh, there is a monthly membership fee, but you can go to Starts for All and you can uh, register and express interest. And for all of you that are interested, I have events monthly and, you know, you're, you know, I'm, I 
always invite people for like a complimentary kind of like couple weeks, usually it's around like two or three weeks to just check things out. So it's free for, uh, to just try things out, meet other folks, see if it's something that you're interested in, and then feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn as well. Thank you everyone for taking part in the session and hopefully I'll connect with you elsewhere as well. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Thanks, Maria. Thank you, Atira. Bye, Valine.